Hey YouTube land, Tyke Anders there doing another action figure review and today we are having a look at something a little bit older from the Joy Toy line. It's something I hadn't initially picked up. I had pre-ordered one of these but it wasn't this particular version and I cancelled the pre-order and I didn't actually pick it up. But this is the, as you can see from the cover of the box, the Ultramarines Venerable Dreadnought. So... I think the reason why I didn't go for this initially is because I was really holding out on the f hoping that they'd bring out a more standard old school style dreadnought, the one with the kind of box sarcophagus looking front to it, this part here at the front. Um, but for the most part, it is it is just like kind of a veteran version of that, hence the vet venerable dreadnought uh, status. But uh, it is in this massive box it, uh, the box itself is pretty big so you have the ultramarine the warm for the house and ultramarine venerable dreadnought logo on the back of the box showcases a few images of what you get there isn't really any assembly required on this and there isn't any there isn't any assembly and there isn't any like stickers or stuff to put together on this it pretty much comes complete in the box. So moving the box out of the way. If I can find some room for it. I need to do some clearing. Especially box clearing. As I have too many boxes knocking around. So. This is what you get in the box. You get this big chappy. And he is a big chappy. So what I'm going to do, I think that then he's nether out of the corner of the shot here. And just center my camera a little bit. So from his feet up to the tip of what should be the smoke launchers, or is it probably the highest point? You're roughly talking about eight, eight inches, between seven and three quarters and eight inches in total. Width-wise... He is around 8 inches in width and for depth for how kind of deep it sits the lar largest part is actually from the LAS cannon or twin link LAS cannon I would imagine so from twin link LAS cannon to its back it is about seven and a half inches so there is quite a lot of floor space needed for one of these things but it is pretty good now articulation wise it is quite articulated for what it is so we'll start with the articulation from the very top so the smoke launchers here are on a swivel they don't pivot up and down they just swivel side to side so there is that the las cannon arm is just a rotation it just can rotate all the way around the power fist with storm bolter arm is actually a bit more articulated so this such section moves out of the way for a articulated joint so it can move out that much which is a nice touch it can rotate around it has a tight joint this piece moves as well to give it a little bit more articulation now i will stress on my one i'm not sure if you can see it here but this cable here there's cables on this and you have to be careful with them because I think this one's starting to fray already. If I move the arm, you can see you can see the white underneath. There is those cables. They are rubbery material, so just be careful with that. So the there is an elbow joint on this. The feed the magazine feed for the bolt, storm bolter is a flexible material. Those pipes are flexible material. These purity seals and laurels and stuff that are hanging off it, they're separate parts. So just be careful with those. I did have one pop off straight away from when I got out of the box, but I was able to just glue it back in place. There is a swivel in the fist. It would have been nice if there was articulated hands, but there isn't, or in fingers for the hands, there isn't. I'll get into the chest articulation after I do the feet, because there's some interesting stuff going on with the legs. So this piston kind of moves forward. It can move out and in so there is articulation there the legs do ratchet forward and back 
There is a ratchet in the knee. There is a piston kind of thing on the legs. So they do move. Now, I'm not sure if these are supposed to be glued up on mine. They are loose. I'm not sure they're supposed to move up and down and kind of hide the joint. It does kind of move with the pistons on the back of the feet. There isn't any articulation in the toes there. And they are hollow underneath. There is a flat piece for the main foot. Again, stressing that these pipes you might have to be careful with because they are a rubbery piece and they are kind of glued into place. The back doesn't have any articulation. Now, the waist is on a big ball joint as well, which is pretty cool. So you get a good range of movement on that. And then the chest area actually does have articulation. So this whole area where it has, I believe this is the name of the Marine, Idarius. This whole section lifts up and you can see what's left of the Space Marine inside. So and the head and this is on a ball joint, so it does move. Now, this chest piece seems to be a little loose on mine. I'm not sure if it's supposed to move or if it's glue, supposed to be glued in place, but it does have a slight move to it or to a slight give to it. But I don't know if it's part of the articulation. I don't think it would be. So the idea behind these guys, these dreadnoughts, is these are fallen space marines, i.e. space marines who were kind of got notoriety being killed in battle, technically killed in battle, uh, but they were able to live on. So their bodies were so badly damaged in battle that they were built into these walking mechan mechanized suits called dreadnoughts, and hence this is what this is. So basically what left what's left of the marine is sitting here the rest of it is all controlled by him and the machine spirits the the old chaos dreadnoughts were a kind of interesting thing the back in the day they had a chaos, they had use of chaos dreadnoughts and the idea behind them is the marine that was inside them had gone so crazy from being trapped in a walking suit they were literally insane uh, one other thing that this comes with, and it's something that a lot of newer figures don't seem to come with anymore, I do kind of miss these, is you get a card, kind of a collector card. Now, I can't read any of the stuff on the back. It just has Venerable Dreadnought, and it has an image of the figure. You see that's supposed to be a searchlight, and you have to see firing the storm bolter. I think this is more of a digitally created image, more than an image of the figure. But you can see, you can kind of recreate the pose of it in there the head is on a ball joint which is kind of cool if you didn't want that head on it you could probably swap this head out with one of the other marine heads like the basic blue space marine heads the way excuse me the way this guy's head is white indicates that he is a veteran a space marine veteran hence again why venerable veteran dreadnought because the standard dreadnoughts i think are made by normal troopers Whereas the, the Venerables are done by veterans, and I think there's even more dreadnoughts from that. So to bring in something for size comparison, which this thing looks dinky compared to, to bring in the Ultramarine Warsuit. So I don't know if the scaling of this is correct, but the dreadnought looks tiny compared to this thing. And... I always figured dreadnoughts were like these big, massive, hunking machines. Like, if bear with me a moment, I'm going to grab one of my standard space marines. Sorry about that, folks. So, like, a bog standard space marine is this height. So these things are fairly big compared to a regular space marine. And for someone kind of more humanish size, I just have Alan Grant here. So like space marines are supposed to be sort of in scale to these are all supposed to be one to eighteen scale, so this should be in scale together. So you can just see how these things scale up. So the dreadnought is still a, a fairly big honking piece of machinery. But it is interesting to see that 
it does look tiny compared to the tactical war suit i don't know if the tactical war suit is in scale i would imagine it is because the guy riding it is an actual space marine he's not built into the machine he's actually controlling it like a power suit and then just for another size comparison just because it's going to look quite dinky next to everything here is the Haya Toys Aliens Power Loader. So this is in scale to G.I. Joe figures. Or 3 inch quarter inch figures. So you can see just how massive these things are. In fact, like the Space Marine himself is nearly the size of the lo loader. And then everything else is just bigger than it. So it's a massive, massive war suit. Um, I did, as I said, I picked this thing up second hand. Well, actually, it came brand new sealed, but I picked up from like um a guy on adverts who sold me this war suit. He actually sold me the Reaver Squad, which I hadn't previously picked up, or the Reaver Squad. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. And he also sold me the one of the bikes, the Outrider bikes. For the intercessors, which I will do a review of. It's actually more, far cooler than I initially thought it was. It's fairly plain and brick like, but it just looks really cool. So when I get around to doing a review of that, I will do a review of that. But for now, this venerable dreadnought is actually really cool. I, I, it's having me second guessing picking up some of the other dreadnoughts that they did for the ultramarine line in fact there is a redemptor dreadnought which i think is slightly bigger than this and i would think it would look pretty cool next to it and i'm not sure if i want to get the ultramarine version of the redemptor dreadnought or the black templar one which they do have because they're pretty cool all in all i do think it's a really cool figure i is recommend i do recommend picking one up if you can get one i managed to get one this one this is a second hand ish kind of like um uh, it was brand new but like it was at cost so it's not too bad excuse me for you all so many times i am just really tired because i've been working all day and i came home and it's roasting hot so it's like double tired so there you go guys i'm gonna wrap this up here now i hope you enjoyed this quick video review for this uh giant dreadnought well secondary giant dreadnought the war suit still out and outscales it but overall it's really cool if you can find one i do recommend picking one up but just don't pay through the nose for one i would re recommend like not too much over retail price would be perfect for these things so there you go i hope you enjoy this video and as always please feel free to like comment and subscribe to my channel cheers guys